Here it is, the thin lens formula. If you have any experience with this equation, you know what a headache it can be keeping track of the pluses and minuses. That's because any of these three quantities can be either positive or negative, and if you don't know why a particular quantity is positive or negative, you're going to have a hard time finding the right answer. You can try to remember what's plus or minus, but that's not so easy. I have been tutoring this stuff for years and I still couldn't remember. The good news is you don't have to remember. If you have a basic understanding of how lenses work, you can deduce what's positive and negative, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Now there are three ways to make an image with a lens, and here they are. There are two ways to do it with a converging lens, and one way to do it with a diverging lens. Converging lens sometimes referred to as a convex lens, diverging sometimes referred to as a concave lens. In the case of the uh, converging lens, the image can either be on the same side of the lens as the object or on the opposite side, whereas the diverging lens will only have an image that's on the same side. Specifically in the case of this image that's opposite from the object, the image can be any distance away from the lens. If the image is fairly close to the lens, it will also be fairly small. That's what happens inside of a camera or inside of your eyeball. Whereas if the image is far away from the object, it will also be uh, fairly large. And that's what happens when a movie projector projects a movie onto a big screen. The reason that the movie is right side up, of course, is because the uh, little picture inside the projector is upside down. Now in the case of an image that's on the same side of the lens as the object is, if it's a converging lens, this is what's going on when you simply use a converging lens as a magnifying glass. And you can see that it's going to make an image that looks bigger than the original object, and there it is. And it turns out actually that the image is not just going to be taller, but since the lens actually magnifies in all three dimensions, the, the image will be taller and wider and deeper. And because the image is deeper, the image will actually be farther away from the lens than the original object is. This is the reason why farsighted people wear glasses with converging lenses. Farsighted people have difficulty focusing on things that are too close, so they like to create an image that's farther away than the thing they're actually looking at. In the case of the diverging lens, it's just the reverse of this. The image will be closer to the lens than the object was, and it will be smaller. This is the kind of lens that nearsighted people wear. Nearsighted people have difficulty focusing on things that are too far away, so they like to look at an image that's closer. And the question is, how does this all relate to plus and minus? Let me draw a little table here. Here's DO, DI, and F. And I want to look at all the various possible combinations of pluses and minuses that we can get from this formula. I'm going to start out with a positive object distance. In fact, I'm only going to talk about cases where the object distance is positive. It is possible to have a negative object distance, but that's uh, a special case known as a virtual object. A virtual object is a more advanced topic that most of you will never have to deal with, so I'm going to skip it. The important thing is you don't need to know anything about virtual objects in order to understand what I'm going to show you. So in this case, I'm going to stick to only real objects which correspond to a positive object distance. So if the object distance is positive, what possible combinations of plus and minus do we have over here? Well, let's suppose the image distance is positive. What would have to be true about the focal length if both DO and DI were positive? Well, let's see. 
If DO is positive, then 1 over DO is positive. If DI is, one, is positive, then 1 over DI is positive. And positive plus positive makes a positive. There's no getting around it. The focal length has to be positive if DO and DI are both positive. Of course, there are other possibilities. I'm going to stick with a positive DO. Suppose we have a negative DI. Well, it's a little more complicated in the case of a negative image distance. There's actually more than one possibility for the focal length. Let me talk about um, one possibility. Suppose, uh, suppose DO is equal to 5 and DI is equal to negative 10. Well, 1 fifth plus negative 1 tenth is going to get you a positive 1 tenth and that's going to correspond to a focal length that's positive. And in that case, the uh, F definitely has to be positive. But that's not the only possibility because if we just pick uh, new magnitudes for our DO and DI, we can actually find a way to make a negative focal length. Suppose we had a uh, DO of positive 10 and a DI of negative 5. Well, 1 tenth plus a negative 1 fifth is actually going to get you a negative number over here, and that's going to correspond to a negative focal length. So in the case of a negative image distance, the focal length can either be positive or negative depending on what the relative magnitudes are of these two quantities. Well, let's compare this back to our uh, original diagram here and see if we can make any sense of this. Well, I hope you can see that we have two situations corresponding to a positive focal length and only one that corresponds to a negative focal length. Here we have two different kind of images associated with a converging lens and only one associated with this diverging lens. It certainly looks to me like these two plus signs here correspond to these two uh, converging lenses right there and the negative focal length must correspond to this negative, uh, this diverging lens right here. Similarly, the um, image distance can be either positive or negative. There's two different situations corresponding to a negative image distance and look over here we have two images that are on the same side of the lens as the object and then we have the one exception over here where the image is opposite from the object and that certainly looks like it would correspond to this one special case of a positive image distance right there. So there you go. Looks like these images here are negative image distance and that image over there corresponds to a positive image distance. And you can see certainly that this negative focal length right here corresponds to a negative image distance which matches this so it all works out.